All right, so many of y'all know that earlier this year I put together the open source computer science degree as I called it. I threw it up on my GitHub along with the whole entire curriculum, except with this, it was all focused on computer science and software engineering, programming, none of the extracurricular like art history. And let me just say, since then, that has absolutely blown up. I mean, the first week, I believe it was on GitHub trending. The video itself going over the open source computer science degree, that has almost 300,000 views. With the actual GitHub repository having about 600 people watching it, over 8,600 stars and over 1,400 forks. And with that, 20 open issues and nine open pull requests. Now I've already gone over one issue in three pull requests earlier in the year, but I've kind of been neglecting it. Now that everything is piled up to what it is today, I figured I would make a video updating the open source computer science degree. Here within the open source computer science degree, we're going to start with the pull request first. And some of these I believe I'm going to leave outstanding because I want y'all's feedback on it. I'll give you my reasoning for what I did and what I decided to do with all of these pull requests and issues. But if there's anything that's undecided or I'm a little bit wary about, I want y'all's input to figure out what is best for everybody. Moving on to our first pull request, this is actually an addition of two sections as well as a few Unix courses. So we have our networking section that this person put together and added and then we have our cybersecurity section and then of course these two courses are along with the unix section now the only issue i have with this although i do appreciate putting together these two sections is that i don't believe that networking and cybersecurity are necessary for someone who is getting a computer science degree or in this particular situation an open source computer science degree the reason being is everything i've listed in here i see as mandatory when you're going into computer science. Computer science basics, that's what you need to take if you're interested in computer science as a whole. It'll break you through into the computer science world to see whether you like it or not. Programming, that's self-explanatory. We all need to know programming. I chose Java just because that's what I like. Math, this is, this is part of your computer science curriculum. Don't mistake it. There are other math courses that you may have taken in college or that you may need to take in college that aren't applied to your computer science degree. But if you'll notice, that's not necessarily part of your computer science curriculum. That is part of your general education requirements. When it comes to your computer science requirements, you will see all six of these classes or a variation of them within your computer science curriculum. And I think they're very important, especially for future classes that you will need to like machine learning. Systems, this is like your computer architecture. You take plenty different years of these and these are the three that I found to be the best. Theory, computer science as a whole is basically theoretical. You need to have the whole entire theoretical understanding of what you're doing in order to actually apply it. Speaking of applied, that's where applications come into the equation. Software engineering, you use software engineering introduction, this particular class, to understand the software development life cycle. Machine learning, that's a big step up from linear algebra. Although you may not be interested in machine learning, it is good to understand that side of things. Database management essentials, it doesn't matter what section of computer science or software engineering you enter, you're going to be interacting with a database one way or another, so it's good to understand it. And then Unix. Unix, Linux command line basics is something that you will need to know because if you want your workflow to actually be efficient, you're gonna to have to use Unix. You don't want to rely on everything within the IDE or everything within your file explorer or everything within all the other different things that you can do within Unix by using GUIs and, and things of that nature. You need to know Unix. So to reiterate myself, I feel like everything listed here, all sections are mandatory for a computer science degree. With this, I don't believe personally that networking would be necessary when it comes to your computer science degree. Let me know your thoughts on that. I'm still iffy on it. I don't think that those are mandatory for every single computer science student, and that's what I was going with. And I felt like you could create a second rendition. Maybe I'll create a second rendition of the open source computer science degree and make it like a make it like a master's degree, where it's another two years or so on top of this within your particular emphasis. So if you're interested in uh, cybersecurity, then you'll be able to select that section and all of those courses will be combined in with that. If you want to do machine learning, artificial intelligence, that area stuff, so on and so forth, you get the gist. On to our second pull request. I realize that I'm a lot more picky about this particular repository than I thought I was going to be. I thought I was going to be open to a lot of people's different changes. However, I feel like my mind is just somewhere else. So maybe this video is more about getting y'all's advice on how I should change up the open source computer science degree instead of actually doing it. Who knows? This is our second pull request. This person actually added, I'm assuming what looks like a little subtitle underneath each of these 
uh, section headers, listing the max amount of time that it would take to complete the open source computer science degree. Whereas here you can see that it's a four year open source computer science degree. And at first I'm like, that doesn't sound right because you take all of these classes in a regular curriculum as well as all of your other general education requirements and that takes four years. And this shouldn't take four years and I, I understand the reason being is that he is assuming, Johnny, you're assuming that you're only taking one course at a time where, and, and that's kind of why I'm opposed to adding the total time that it would take to complete this section because I don't expect each section to be done at once. And by that, I don't mean at the same time, I mean in order by one section to one section to one section. I like to have this duration here, that way you can come into computer science basics. You, maybe you take your computer science basic course, just take one, see how you like it, and then you're like, I really like this, let me dive in. So then you come in, you take the entry level with no prerequisite programming course. You take the lowest level math course, you pick a systems course, and you, you pick four to five courses that are roughly the same level, meaning minimal prerequisites, and then you grow from there, and same level in terms of uh, week durations. That way you effectively have a semester within a particular amount of time instead of sitting one course and then one course and then one course. And that's why I didn't add in the particular amount of time per section is because I don't want people looking at the section for one amount of time. I want them to look at each individual course in order to add these courses together so they can understand which courses they need to take at the same time. So although I do appreciate you going through and you're kind of coming in, you're adding in these durations here and adding it as a subtitle, I'm gonna have to close out this and not merge it just because I think that may mess with the mindset of some people who are looking into this actual thing because it's not four years and I don't wanna group it into four months or seven months or 14 months in someone's mind because mentally they'll be like, wow, that is a long time. I don't wanna conquer that. I want people to, essentially what I was talking about in a recent video is taking this big problem of a computer science degree, we split it down into different sections and each section we split down into separate courses and those courses are what you're gonna knock out one by one. I hope that makes sense. All right, so our third poor course of the day seems as though I may have made a mistake. In Files Change, it seems that I just accidentally put in Stanford for this school instead of Udacity. And in fact, if I come over to and share two statistics down in math, we will see that that is in fact Udacity and I don't see any trace of Stanford within here. So yeah, that is a typo. Thank you for catching that. Cool, our first merge of the day. <laughs> it only has three times the charm, it's true. All right, what is this, pull request four, five, something? Basically, this is the addition of a pre-calculus course. Actually integrated in a very nice way, and two other people seem to be agreeing with what he has said here. Hello, I've added links to two pre-calculus courses for folks who need that also please merge if you found useful and over on files change you'll see the changes basically it is a one and a two right here next to the pre-calculus right here each of which going to a different course the first course is actually a, like an entry level algebra course college algebra course and then it falls into pre-calculus whereas the algebra course would be the prerequisite to the pre-calculus and currently the pre-calculus is a prerequisite to calculus 1a and yes that is something good in order to integrate for those who still need to do pre-calculus i was just under the impression that most people at this stage looking into something this complex have already taken pre-calculus and algebra that's why I didn't integrate it here. So our final pull request is, I saw your course list and thank you. I've made a list too if you wanna share it with others, just wanna help out. Has a dislike and what is the point of this PDF file? So you integrated a PDF file within here. Am I even able to see this PDF file somehow? All right, so I think he's assuming that these are actual links, but when you do a PDF like this, the links are effectively rendered useless. So I'm gonna have to close this out. What you would have to do is effectively integrate a link to your PDF where your PDF is sitting on some type of like GitHub page and then you would be able to click on it, not trying to link the PDF like it is here. So I'm gonna have to close this out. On to the issues. Now this one's gonna be interesting. So just an idea, add subsection like cybersecurity. <laughs> Very interesting. But I've already addressed that and actually this person agrees with me. Maybe that could be add-on sections outside of the general premise. I love the ideas. So 
that could be it where while this is the mandatory stuff maybe i like i was thinking create a whole other repository like i said some type of masters or i could kind of just divide it right here and keep all of those particular sections or emphasis is emphasized i don't know the plural for emphasis underneath the mandatory courses incorrect link to section math intro to statistics stanford now Here's the thing, I did just change this earlier, but that is not because I found it to be an incorrect link, but because I changed it from Stanford to Udacity. Wait, didn't I? Yeah. However, it isn't the instance of the incorrect link, it is was the actual the instance of the incorrect school listed. So I corrected that, this issue, corrected. Features suggestion, add certificate, certification available as a note. Some of the courses in the list offer a certification at the end of them. Knowing which ones offer certification might be useful to some. Yes, it would be useful to some, but you do have to pay for the certification. The idea behind this is to make it free. So, additional computer science basics course, MIT, Introduction to Computer Science and Programming in Python. My only issue is that we already have two computer science basics, which is into to computer science and mathematical thinking computer science. And if we add another, that would be kind of another option, if you will. Introduction to computer science and programming in Python. And considering I actually focused everything within Java, I decided not to incorporate anything like this. Because if you take an intro to computer science and programming in Python, you have that intro to programming in Python, and then you can't follow the rest of the curriculum because I integrated everything with Java program. Suggestion request, add prerequisite pre-calculus. Pre-calculus is listed as prerequisite. It would be nice if there's a course link to assist with preparing for calculus courses. Three people thumbs this up, so that is four, plus five of the other pull requests, plus two, so that is seven people already who came over here and decided to take initiative to take action and say, hey, you should probably link a prerequisite uh, pre-calculus course, so, Maybe I will. I'm open to this, but should we include lower level math curriculum too? And that was my main problem is that I didn't want to incorporate everything. That's why I was trying to base it straight off of calculus. I'm thinking I will incorporate a pre-calculus course here. And, it, and, and then considering the amount of comments and engagement on these two comments, I think it would be a good idea to just add that pre-calculus link into where I say pre-calculus is a prerequisite, which would be under Calc 1A and then linear algebra. Why not Harvard CS50? Now, this has been talked about all within here. I mean, there's nine people that like this comment and quite a conversation going on here, as well as on my YouTube video. A lot of people were like, why not Harvard CS50? And I just felt like, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm gonna add Harvard CS50 in place of the UVA Intro to Computer Science right here. 10 weeks, 10 to 20 hours per week instead of five hours per week. And this is a self-paced course, so perfect. But for here, what we've done is we've taken a note of Agukova's comment and all these likes and all those other comments under my YouTube video. We are incorporating the intro to CS by Harvard in place of the intro to CS by UVA especially considering how many people suggested it and simply because of this comment right here. And then what we've also done is we've gone down here. We have taken the ASU pre-calculus course on edX, found our pre-calculus prerequisites listed here and right here, added ASU pre-calculus and Harvard CS courses. That'll fit. All right, cool. I just realized I no longer have the GitHub dark theme on here because I built a whole new computer and this is all new operating system. I should probably get that going. So down here, as we can see, everything linked is in white. So this should take us on over to edX. And this up here, Harvard, we changed the duration from 12 weeks to 10 weeks, the effort from five hours per week to 10 to 20 hours per week. And it links straight up to the CS50 Harvard course. Missing license. Now this is something that, yeah, I didn't incorporate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new file. Yes, I'm doing everything in the GitHub client here. We're gonna name this license. And as you'll see a button, choose a license tip that pulls up. I'm gonna click MIT license, review and submit, and good to go. All right, so here we have it. We have a license officially, and we have our readme, which is the open source computer science degree. And this is something that a lot of people were saying in the conversation of the video, only seven day free trial on Coursera. When I tried to enroll in the course, I only get the option to do seven day free trial and then pay 75 bucks a month. I thought it was supposed to be free. And this is right here. And I tried to, I tried to make clear is that you should still be able to audit 
any Coursera course. This, however, will block access to some of the assignments and assessments, and of course, the cert certificates in some of the courses. So just right down here, set a free trial, you audit the course, and that's what will allow you to do these courses for free. It's just now come to my attention that the open source computer science degree that I spent so long putting together, making a repository, throwing it up on GitHub, making a video so it was more awareness around this so people could have free courses, it's effectively no longer free because at the beginning of 2019, which was what, eight months ago, edX is no longer giving free access to most of their courses and Coursera has also been limiting the amount of courses that you're able to audit. Regardless, I've already gone through and, and I'm still going through the last few issues and pull requests of this repository because I do want to continue to keep it up to date and maybe, just maybe, I will go in and look at all of these edX courses and maybe some of the Coursera courses and see if I can find replacements for them with actual free courses and I'll edit the entire open source computer science degree with what it what effectively should be free courses. I'm not very happy about their decision here but I mean this is kind of out of my hands and that is a problem with relying on other platforms for anything really. So until we can get all of this situated, RIP to the open source computer science degree, but actually I want to take a step back from, from cutting the cord on the open source computer science degree because I've been doing quite a bit of research since I recorded this video. I was actually sitting here about to upload the video. All I needed to do was make the thumbnail and it was ready to go. However, I can't seem to validate this issue. Like it says, since the beginning of 2019, edX is no longer giving free access to most of their courses. That got me thinking when I reread this just now is the fact that the open source computer science degree wasn't put together until after the beginning of 2019. I put it together sometime in February, if I'm not mistaken, and everyone seemed to be just fine. This particular issue is the only place where I have seen anyone have any trouble with edX and, and actually point out that they're no longer giving free access to most of their courses and that actually made me come on into here and look at all of the courses, find the ones that are from edX, which in this particular issue says that, or this comment down here in the issue says edX is a platform where many of the courses on this list are hosted. And at the time of this comment, it was only five. And now in total six, because we added the CS50 Harvard course. However, if we look at each and every one, look at the price, it all says free, 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 and free. So I'm assuming we're not affected in terms of the open source computer science degree from this whole edX paywall deal that happened at the end of 2018, beginning of 2019 stuff. But that also begs the question, what about Coursera? So this person, um, JMSTC, also had this comment where he said the edX is a platform where many of the courses are hosted. It says, by the way, Coursera is now also limiting free, aka audit access for many courses and specializations. This was on May 24th, which was three months ago. And I tried to Google a little bit about maybe some people covering this, this particular story. I couldn't find anything about it. And I don't know where this person is getting their information. I've heard nobody else have any trouble with continually auditing Coursera courses. And I just haven't had the time to go through all of the Coursera courses in this curriculum, which are quite a few, and audit each and every one to see if they actually cut off my access. But I couldn't find any information saying how they are now limiting their access compared to before. I mean, you look at this article that he gave and it says edX put up paywall for graded assignments. This was back in December 2018. And they talk about how Coursera was first introduced paywall three years ago, but that was just for graded assignments. So I don't, I just don't know where this information is coming from. I had actually closed out this issue and I decided to reopen it and say, actually every single one of the edX courses on this curriculum is free. I'm not sure the validity of Coursera limiting their auto access considering I couldn't find anything. Would you mind linking to where you saw that? So if he ends up linking to it in a future video, not a dedicated video, but a future video, I will tell y'all about it or I'll leave a comment in this comment section. That would make more sense. And that's what I'll do if he ends up finding a link that actually, that backs up what he is saying about the Coursera limiting free access or auditing courses. So it looks like the open source computer science degree lives to fight another day.